Regional planning in Chautauqua County has a rather interesting historical record, and you've got to look for it uh, to be able to find it. Realize that we're dealing with 27 towns, 15 villages, two cities, 19 school districts, 42 fire districts, and a multiplicity of about 120 or 140 uh, special districts in Chautauqua County that provide a wide range of uh, services from lighting districts to garbage collection districts, uh, park districts, etc. Regional planning, in my mind, first happened in the, the 20s. Before that time, each town, each village, each citizen struggled with its own efforts. We did see some cooperative efforts between the towns from the village of Fredonia down to the state line heading toward Warren uh, in the 1860s with the financing of that railroad by local town bonds. Uh, that was the last time that type of financing was allowed. Uh, so maybe you might call that a regional effort of, of some sort. But the first regional effort that, that I recognize is when the county of Chautauqua became responsible for a county highway system. And between 1920 and 1925, a comprehensive map was created uh, that created the Chautauqua County Highway System. Now that took an awful lot of give and take over several years to decide which of the roads in the county would be taken up off of the shoulders of the town government and become a, a charge and a responsibility of county government but realize that it didn't happen until the state of New York authorized counties to be involved with highways. Our first highway superintendent, as I recall, was appointed in uh, 1919 or 1920, and uh, for several years he was involved in, in the development of the, the concept of what would be county roads. The next intermunicipal or regional, John, what is a region? That's a good question. To me, a region is something that you measure for the influence of, of one item. Uh, employment. The area that people are drawn from to come to an employment opportunity becomes that region. So that I can have a, all kinds of of different types of regions, but I think we've got a Dunkirk Fredonia region that we can readily identify. Other, under other conditions, we can talk about the Erie Lake Plain region running across the upper edges of the county because of some common denominator, if nothing else, Lake Erie. And we have the Jamestown community, which of course goes much beyond the Jamestown city municipality. It includes uh, town of Carroll, town of Cayenton, town of Busti, north and south uh, Harmony, north and south Harmony, north Harmony and Harmony, <laughs> it goes, it, that extends almost to Sherman, uh, then it comes up the lake into the town of Ellery, uh, into the town of Gary, uh, maybe as far as, as uh, Stockton, and, and that's might be called the Jamestown region, but we'll look at another regional concept a little bit later. Uh, the first regional planning that I am cognizant of was done by the county with grants from the state of New York in the mid-60s, and it had to do with water and sewage planning. What were the facilities that we had throughout Chautauqua County concerning water supply and sewer facilities. They were two separate plans. However, for Chautauqua County, they were both done by the, uh, the same engineering firm. Their responsibility was extremely simple. Let's look at the water resources. Let's look at the water capacity of the existing systems. Uh, if there's going to be federal and state funding, uh, how do we want to allocate federal and state funds uh, based upon the existing systems? Uh, and that became a, a work that uh, was assigned to the Chautauqua County Planning Board. 
uh, and therefore as the secretary of the planning board and at that time the planner for the county planning board, uh, it became my responsibility to uh, be the technical person working with the planning board to oversee that effort. And we did look at uh, all of the water and the sewer systems in Chautauqua County. And the document has been used in guiding the development of water and sewer systems in the two different parts of the county. Uh, in some instances, it's been used as, to qualify the uh, region for Farmers Home Administration loans and grants, which were historically available. It has been used for economic development grants, uh, where we were looking at need to interconnect uh, water and sewer uh, systems. Uh, it has been used as a background uh, for several other planning issues when we were looking for state or federal assistance. Over the years, uh, it served its purpose. However, it wasn't a regional plan in the sense that the governments involved uh, were real dynamic participators in the process. It was a very technical piece of work, and it said, this is what we have, this is the most practical way to solve it. It didn't say the most practical political way to solve it, but this is the most practical engineering way to solve it, and this is how we should do it. So a number of capital grants uh, flowed based on that. Uh, the water and sewer, or the sewer grants around Chautauqua Lake, which ranged anywhere from 75% to 87.5% of the cost of the building of a sewage treatment plant or a rebuilding of a sewage treatment plant and the extension of uh, certain lines out into the countryside uh, were funded under those two documents, basically adopted by the Board of Supervisors about 1967 or 66. Uh, along about that time, we also had the Department of Housing and Urban Development that was involved in in trying to get local governments to plan and they were saying we are not going to give HUD grants to a municipality unless they have a comprehensive plan. So in the Urban Area Planning Act of 1954 there was a section called 701 which was a matching fund grant that, that gave up to 50 percent of the cost of a municipal plan uh, to the municipality to, as, to use as a matching grant to bring in a consultant to create a comprehensive plan. Well, as that money came along, with the guidance of the County Planning Board, we influenced the Dunkirk Fredonia community, <clears throat> which at that time was made up of the town of Dunkirk, uh, the vi city of Dunkirk, the village of Fredonia, and the town of Pomfret as the core group. We got them together and under the leadership of Marden Cobb, a regional planning board was created and they went into a 701 urban planning assistance grant program. Uh, at different times, uh, Portland and the town of Sheridan have been involved in that type of communication. And I understand that within the last uh, year, a new initiative in that area has taken place, but I'm going to deal with the attempts that were made in the past. Uh, studies were done concerning all of the land use of these municipalities, all recorded on very sophisticated maps. Uh, highlights were made of positive and negative things about the community. <clears throat> we suggested one of the things that came out of that planning program was the initial linking between the Dunkirk and Fredonia water uh, facilities. Then came the location of the Fredonia sewage treatment plant down on Route 5, which was part of the previous regional planning that I talked to you about, and, and part of uh, this planning. But one of the challenges in Chautauqua County is while we are seeing land use changes take place at a dynamic rate, such as we've relocated downtown Dunkirk and downtown Fredonia to Vineyard Drive in its vicinity, and we've looked at downtown Lakewood and downtown Faulkner and downtown Jamestown basically be strung out along Fairmont Avenue in West Ellicott and Lakewood. Uh, we, we've seen no continual use of that particular planning effort. One of the things that excites me about the Dunkirk Fredonia region and, and a challenge that they still haven't faced is the challenge of Crooked Brook. 
which starts up in the hills of Arkwright and courses down along Bennett Road and it's encased in an iron-clad ditch at this point and then it zooms underground under the New York State Thruway, courses through the city of Dunkirk and out into the town of Dunkirk and creates problems. As long as we don't have a cloud that comes along and really rains just in that watershed, uh, we're all right. But one of these days, there's going to be a stormwater problem that this regional agency is going to have to look at. The work of Martin Cobb and his regional planning board went on actually for 14 years. And out of it came a number of planning documents. Uh, I don't know if any of them are still on file in any of the municipalities. Uh, because they used them, the city of Dunkirk used them for their urban renewal qualifications, and the other municipalities used their plans uh, very in a very limited manner uh, related to other types of loans and grant programs. But there was never a cohesive adoption by all of these municipalities of the regional concept. The regional concept dealt with particular roads. And by the way, well, I'm I'm, I'm going to go off on a little diatribe here. The road system of Chautauqua County is the road system that for all practical purposes will serve us for the next 50 years. We must protect the traffic carrying capability of those roads. That means that each municipality along the state roads and the county roads particularly should look at their subdivision regulations and their zoning regulations and how they are going to affect access onto these roads and the carrying capability of these roads. Uh, I have already seen speed limits being lowered and lowered and lowered because of the type of unorganized development that is taking place along some of the state and county roads. And if we want to have a viable community that we can move through with a reasonable amount of speed, we, are going, we, all of us together, or in the regions, are going to have to say, this is an important road, and we want to see development along its full length have this type of consistency. There was a wonderful plan done for the Bennett Road area, and it's been totally ignored. And, and I, Bennett Road, of course, is, is probably the highest traffic road in Chautauqua County from, from the throughway exit to Route 20. And, uh, we could have had a better development there, but it was very complex. It took the village of Fredonia, the town of Pomfret, the town of Dunkirk, and the city of Dunkirk to get together to try and say, this is the way we would like to see it done, and then have the municipalities go through the process to have it done in that particular mode or manner. At the same period of time that we were working with the dunkirk Fredonia Regional Planning Board, uh, by the way, I mentioned Marden Cobb. Let me mention him again for a moment. At one point, Marden Cobb chaired the Dunkirk Fredonia Regional Planning Board, and at the same time, twice or three times a month, he'd change his hat and he'd come up and he'd be the chairman of the county planning board. And then several times a month, he would go on down to Salamanca to chair the Southern Tier West Regional Planning and Development Board which covered all of the town of, uh, all of the counties of Chautauqua, Cattaraugus, and Allegheny. So Martin Cobb played a, a very interesting role in the concept of planning uh, for Chautauqua County, and I take my hat off to him. The Urban Area Planning Board of Southern Chautauqua County had its final reports come out in 1971 and 1972. <clears throat> it was a two-year program federally assisted under the Urban Area Planning Board of Southern Chautauqua County. It included the city of Jamestown, the village of Lakewood, village of Bemis Point, the village of Mayville, and the towns surrounding Chautauqua Lake. And I'm sorry, but in my memory bank right now, I can't remember if Cayentone and, and Carroll were included with that and, and Poland or not. At some time, that flexed out momentarily, at least into those areas. This was a group of municipal leaders. The planning board was made up of basically elected officials, uh, met at least monthly with the firm of Kendry and Shepard as they were planning consultants to develop their plan. When the final planning document was completed, 
I was very pleased with several things in the planning document. It did a good job of recording the existing land use the year that the land use was taken. It did a good job for each municipality with a topographic analysis map that showed areas that were of particular slope characteristics and as the slope became steeper and steeper of course had less and less attractiveness for uh, development and if development were to take place on them it would take very sophisticated um, effort to keep them from creating erosion problems. That program was completed in 1972. Uh, I don't know how many of the existing municipalities still have the documents. They had a, a two document report given to them by the firm and as it was closed out by the federal government. They had a, a document that said here are our assets and here's where we want to go. There was one difficulty with that plan. It was premised on the growth experience that uh, was being experienced in the northeastern United States and upon the presentation of the final document I asked the uh, consultants how do we get from here to what you have in the document because it suggested a number of dynamic changes in uh, road patterns and infrastructure all of which I'm sorry to say uh, all of the documents are now in file possibly in local libraries and in some of the town libraries. I know, I know that they're not in some town governmental libraries because they returned all of their copies to the county planning department. But you have, you have North Harmony that participated in it, you had Busti, you had Chautauqua. If these communities are going back into a planning program I would suggest that they uh, seek copies of the documents in the uh, files of the uh, County Department of Planning. This is also the case for the uh, Dunkirk Fredonia Regional Planning Program. At one point during the Jurassic administration, which I called the years 72 to 82, uh, I also had uh, working with me as part of my team, Bill Plormitt, and we began to look at uh, highway systems and could there be more cooperation between highway departments and those types of things. Uh, we, we met a, a, a very cold shoulder. At one point Joe was, Jirasi was trying to put together the concept, is there some type of an incentive mechanism that the county could create that would cause the, the municipalities to be more cooperative if not joining together? more cooperative. Uh, Alan Austin, professor at, at uh, Fredonia, took a leave of absence and we did a study of the attitude of the people in the Jamestown community toward becoming a single metropolitan area. And uh, the things that were carried, the, the, the crosses, the agonies, the accusations, uh, the myth, uh, we came to the conclusion that it would take a monumental education program to begin to get these municipalities to think cooperatively, not in joining together and melding or creating a new government, but just to do things cooperatively. I'm happy to say that I have seen signs since I retired in 1990 that some of our government units are becoming more cooperative in their uh, use of facilities and the programs that we have. One of the problems that we have is the jealousy of protection of tax base. The town of Ellicott and the town of Chautauqua have had a blessing in tax base growth. Uh, the city of Jamestown is losing tax base. If you look at all of Chautauqua County and put together the tax base and look at an inflation rate since World War II, the growth of the value of property in Chautauqua County is not kept pace with an inflationary rate. In other words, if it, we just look at what its value would be over time if we didn't add anything. There are a number of things that we can do cooperatively. The question of regional government or new government, I think we've got to approach with, with, with uh, an interesting eye. Let's first of all learn to cooperate better than we have in the past. 
before we start talking to the public about joining the town of Ellicott and the city of Jamestown, because there we have an identity loss uh, for the townspeople that I don't think they're ready to blend themselves into the politics of the city of Jamestown. There are a number of barriers to do away with that, that type of activity. Uh, I mentioned at the opening of this presentation some hundred and, I guess it's 141 special districts in Chautauqua County. These are all, in most instances, isolated districts that cannot function by themselves or within their jurisdiction as part of the jurisdiction tax costs, but they are services to a very specific group of people and therefore that very specific group of people carry the cost. Oh, there's one other regional activity that uh, happened, and that was in the late 60s, county government was given the opportunity to create water and sewer districts when they would serve more than a single municipality. So we have had created in the Dunkirk-Fredonia region, we have the portland pomfort dunkirk sewer agency which is a county district and it supplies services to uh, parts of those three municipalities. We then have the North Chautauqua Lake Sewer District which serves the village of Mayville and an area from Galway Road on the east side of Hartfield Bay all the way down exclusive of Chautauqua Institution to the boundaries, north boundaries of the Prendergast fish hatchery. So that has become a regional sewer system. I sit on the board as co-chair and we're now challenged with the fact that the district is 20 years old and we are beginning to look at the fact that we're reaching some capacities uh, in the existing system. We're going to have to make some changes. We then have the uh, north, uh, I'm sorry, we then have the center and the south Chautauqua Lake sewer district. In this instance, we had the village of Bemis Point in the town of Ellery without sewer service and part of the town of Ellicott without sewer service and through the creation of a uh, regional facility, the center Chautauqua Lake Sewer District uh, extended itself down as far as the Cheney Farm and up as far as Midway Park. Then from the south boundary of the Cheney Farm all the way around to the Hughes Center on the west side of the lake, we have service by the South Chautauqua Lake Sewer District. These districts were created simultaneously and at one point we were sitting at a board meeting and I turned to the engineers and I said, what would it cost to not put a sewage treatment plant with the Center Chautauqua Lake Sewer District? How much more would it cost the people of the Center Chautauqua Lake Sewer District to have their sewage go down and be treated in the South Chautauqua Lake Sewer District? And the engineer smiles as they always smile and said, we'll be back with that answer after a week or two of calculation. They came back and they told us that the cost would be $5 more a year for the people in the center Chautauqua Lake Sewer District. A motion was made and passed very rapidly that there be no sewage treatment plant built in the center Chautauqua Lake Sewer District and that a combined plant be built in the South Chautauqua Lake Sewer District. Uh, that was regional thinking at, at, I think, one of its best that we've been able to have. That was back in the days of the Board of Supervisors under the leadership of uh, Dick Evans at that particular time. Uh, those two sewer proposals had a very difficult time. The funding formulas changed over time. Uh, not only that, but the criteria as to how much treatment you would give the sewage would change. There was a federal moratorium. There was a misinterpretation of the geology of the area. And we had a very difficult time in the final analysis during the Jurassic administration, bringing both of those sewer districts into existence and into operation. Again, a, a person that played a focal role in that was Bill Parmet and uh, Joseph Jurassic, the county executive. Uh, it was a difficult time. But we now have a regional system that does a reasonable job of treating the sewage where it was emptying as primary sewage or as, as untreated sewage 
uh, into Chautauqua Lake. There's little doubt in my mind that the North Chautauqua Lake Sewer District, the Center Chautauqua Lake Sewer District, and the South Chautauqua Lake Sewer District have contributed markedly uh, to the, what I perceive to be the changing environment of Chautauqua Lake. Uh, it is my estimate that along with other land use changes that have taken place in the watershed because of normal market conditions and the Agricultural Act of 1985, uh, that we're probably looking at a uh, phosphorus loading in Chautauqua Lake that's uh, some 50 to 55 percent lower than it was in 1975. So there has been other regional thinking. There's other regional thinking going on right now in the Dunkirk, Fredonia area. I would hope that they'll be able to bring it uh, to a, a better conclusion than we did in the, in the 60s and 70s. The municipalities of the J Jamestown community are now meeting on a, uh, a regular basis to talk about joint problems, which I think are very, very encouraging. To suggest that the people of the communities are ready to dynamically change the form of government, uh, I, uh, I find that doubtful, uh, particularly in what happened in the town of Ellicott in the last election. I believe that Fran Morgan uh, lost her chair as, uh, position as supervisor of the town of Ellicott based on a new assessment process rather than the fact that Fran was doing a bad job. The public did not understand the assessment process, uh, did not understand what it was going to mean to them in the final analysis, and uh, those types of feelings are still dynamic within all of our municipal jurisdictions within Chautauqua County. What's your tax base is your tax base, what is my tax base is my tax base, and you can't have any of it. Uh, even though we want your electric service out here and your water service, but we're not willing to share the growth in the tax base. And that's one of the challenges of the Dunkirk for uh, Donia community, and even more so in Jamestown, where you have the city of Jamestown and its Board of Public Utilities providing an electric service in a, an area that extends beyond the corporate limits of the city of uh, Jamestown and where it is supplying water service to areas outside of the uh, city. Realize that uh, the city is also applying, uh, providing sewer service uh, to the village of Faulkner and parts of the town of Ellicott. So it, it's, it, you have a creeping change that is taking place and I think these, these cooperative places have to be uh, based on the experience that I've had at the attempt at regional planning which is soft and gentle and doesn't necessarily come smack up dab and says you have to make a political decision. However, I will say to all of the municipalities of Chautauqua County, we must guard the traffic carrying capabilities of all of the roads that we have in the county today. I see no road program in the future that is going to give us any dynamic change in the whole system. Therefore, for the next 50 years, the roads that we have now are the roads of tomorrow, and we've got to protect their traffic capability.